हरि ओम जेंटली क्लोज योर आईज योर फिंगर्स इंटरलेस्ड एंड प्लेस इन फ्रंट योर बैक नेक एंड हेयर डायरेक्ट your breathing normal attend to your mind gently dismiss all the thoughts that come into your mind breathe deeply and be aware of your breathing alone we will chant the mantra om followed by the invocatory prayer सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वीनावदीतमस्तु मावेवह we will chant 10 shlokas from the bhagavad gita chapter 2 verses 21 to 30 please <coughs> chapter 2 verses 21 till 30 वेद विनाशिनम नित्यम यये न मजमौ व्ययम कथम सपुरुष पार्थ कम गातयति हन्ति कम वासांसि जीर्णानि यथा विहाय नवानि गृन्नाति नरोपराणि तथा शरीरा विहाय जीर्णा अति नवाहि नयन चिंद नयन दहति पावक न चैन क्लेदयप न शोषयति मारुत अच्छेद्योयम दाह्योयम 
अक्लेद्योषोष एवच नित्य सर्वगतस्थानो हो अचलोयम सनातना अव्यक्तोयम चिंत्योयम अविकार्यो यमुच्चते तस्मा देवम विदित वैनम नानुशोचितु मरहसि आतचैनम नित्य जातम नित्यम वा मन्यसे मृतम तथा पित्वम महाबाहो नैवम शोचितु मरहसि जातस्य हि द्रुवो मृत्यु हु द्रुवम जन्म मृतस्य च तस्माद परिहार येर्थे नत्वम शोचितु मरहसि अव्यक्तादीनि भूतानि व्यक्तमध्यानि भारत अव्यक्तनिधनान्येव तत्रका परिदेवना आश्चर्यवत पश्यति कष्टिदेनम् आश्चर्यवत वदति तथै वचान्यः आश्चर्यवत चैनमन्यश्रुनोति श्रुत्वाप्येनम् वेदनचैवकस्चेत देहि नित्यवमद्योयम् देहे सर्वस्य भारत तस्मात् सर्वानि भूतानि नत्वम् शोचितु मरहसि A human being is constituted of outer personality and the inner personality. <coughs> The outer personality is the physical body. The inner personality is constituted of two equipments, the mind and the intellect. <coughs> the physical body <coughs> by itself is inert there is no life if the physical body has life by itself if I chop this hand and put it down here the hand should move but at present my hand is moving I am performing some exercise if this movement is possible by this body alone then even if it is chopped It should move it doesn't move so there is something in the hand other than the hand which makes the hand move <coughs> a 
it is the inner personality which makes the hand move for that matter the entire physical body moves because of the inner personality <coughs> It is either the mind which gives signal to the instruction to the physical body to move to perform an action or it is the intellect which gives instructions to the physical body to perform an action or third possibility is the combination of mind and intellect which makes the physical body perform an action. If the mind is giving instructions to the physical body to perform an action, it is called as indiscriminate action. The likes and dislikes of the mind, the desires of the mind, the worry and anxiety of the mind, the impulse of the mind, impulse is just a thought. <clears throat> Why are you listening to this lecture? It is just, it could be because of these three possibilities. You would have been browsing the internet, various websites on uh, spirituality, lectures on Vedanta, you would have seen the picture, the photograph, so you would have had a thought, let me listen to this person's talk, it is just an impulse, it is just a thought. <sighs> In the initial stage, there is no like or dislike. To listen to this talk. The second possibility is you would have heard somebody listening to my talk and they would have spoken to you about that talk and it has created a, a sankalpa, a thought in you, not this, just before listening to this talk here, this would have happened many times, many days back or weeks back. So, the thought has been planted in your mind and you wanted to listen, you want to hear, but the right conducive environment or the time factor plays a role and you'd have been thinking about it your preoccupations doesn't allow you to listen to the talk. So they would have said, you know, here is a person who is addressing on uh, very many issues, very many problems. The basics are well explained. The basics, the fundamentals of Vedanta are well explained. 
I have the person, the third person is telling you, I have immensely benefited from this, so why don't you also take it up? Why don't you also listen? <clears throat> so what happens? You are thinking on that thought which is planted. The thought here is to listen to the talk. So after many days, when the thinking process has been initiated, then the intellect is now giving instruction to the physical body. One fine day you are, you are creating time. Otherwise, you are busy. There is no time for you to listen to such talks. So a time has come where you are setting aside an hour <coughs> on this day, this particular week of the day, this particular time of the day, let me, you know, listen to his talk. And then that particular day of the week, time of the day, you sit there, switch on your, uh, your laptop, you connect to the, you know, that particular website and then you listen. So it is, uh, the second possibility is based on your thinking. <clears throat> Third possibility is the mind likes to hear such talks, talks on the spiritual subjects, topics, and the intellect also gives the sanction. Each and every action a human being performs, these are the three possible ways either by the mind. That is, physical actions are either propelled by the mind alone, the intellect alone, the likes and dislikes alone, or reason, thinking, discrimination alone, or the combination. Now, how this physical body by itself cannot act, it is either the mind or the intellect is propelling the physical body to perform that action, then how is it that the mind and intellect by itself, can they act? The inner personality, can they perform an action, initiate action, physical action on their own? If that is possible, then the, mind, the inner personality by itself becomes a subtlest equipment. <coughs> How do we prove that it is also not the inner personality, the mind and the intellect which is propelling the physical body to perform action? Friends, many a times we wanted to avoid something, to watch a particular uh, sight to utter a particular uh, word, to visit a particular place. <coughs> we wanted to avoid to eat a particular food, but something in us forces us to watch that website. Something in us is, force, is forcing us to say utter that word something in us is forcing us to eat a particular food later on we ourselves repent for such action why did they say that i should have not said that at that particular moment meaning you you can say later on afterwards but that particular moment that timing the words are like equivalent to stabbing a person we are stabbing another person with words 
So, this itself is a proof that the mind and the intellect, the inner personality by, you know, itself is not uh, controlling the physical action. Something other than the mind and intellect is controlling the, phys the, contro controlling the physical action. Then what is that? The very nature of the person doesn't allow, the person wants to be otherwise. But that nature doesn't allow the person to stay away from it. That nature is what is termed here, the technical word is Vasana. Vasana is the seed of the personality. Vasana is the cause Mind and intellect is the effect Mind and intellect is the cause Physical action is the effect So in this world everything is beautifully orchestrated is functioning, happening based on the law of cause and effect, the law of causation. <clears throat> Without the cause, there is no effect. A person is physically healthy, that is the effect. In the past, the same person has performed exercises would have performed exercises, would have eaten the right type of food, that is the cause. Present effect is healthy lifestyle. The person is rich today, the same person would have, you know, <clears throat> I'm not talking here about inherited property. Those who would have been uh, paupers, They would have sown the seed to become uh, rich. They want to earn money. So that is the cause. And present effect is the, you know, they are multimillionaires. A person today is emotionally stable. Meaning, in the past, the person would have thought about how to govern one's emotion, what emotions to be entertained, that is the cause. A person is an erudite scholar. In the past, the person would have gone to attended university. Spiritually evolved today means the person in the past has put in effort perform that sadhana so there is a perfect cause and effect relationship <coughs> the reason why I am bringing in this topic is the previous topic we discussed four different personality layers physical personality emotional personality intellectual personality and spiritual personality and all this <coughs> are interconnected by the self Atman the life principle friends we discussed saying that physical body by itself cannot perform action it is the mind and the intellect is propelling the physical body to perform an action the mind and intellect by itself is not propelling the physical body to perform an action. It is the vasanas which is uh, propelling the mind and intellect and the physical body to perform an action. Then do you mean to say the vasana is the subtlest here? Vasana is equal to Atman? <coughs> vasana is also the changing 
matter. Vasana is also not that, you know, in a way it is uh, unchangeable. In what sense? It is not that easy to change one's nature. Any growth is gradual. It takes time. Physical growth takes a lot of time. The growth of inner personality takes a lot of time. Same way to change one's nature, behavior, conduct, character takes a lot of time. In that sense, at a point of time, it is changeless. But if you take a, a long period of time, it is changeable. So that changeless, the self, the name is given, it is just that word. You can call, you can give any name. <coughs> People gave the name as Atman. <coughs> so to come back here on the topic that four different personality layers connected by that Atman there. If you forget Atman, then you will be concluding that physical body, mind, intellect, vasanas themselves can perform an action. Don't forget Atman there, <coughs> the subtract. 